Hi, everybody. Welcome to another 30 minutes of The Worldview. I'm Chris Greco, your host for this half hour long look at different countries in different situations and how it affects us in the United States. So today we're going to be covering is Saudi Arabia aligns with Iran. Now, the problem with this is that this right here, Saudi Arabia aligns with Iran, is like covered like this much in the U.S. media. And uh, I'm going to tell, I'm going to, to do an endorsement here. Haystack News. Haystack News, free on Roku. It is fantastic. It uh, gives all kind of different international looks. Yes, you can get local news, but to tell the honest God truth, I don't even look at that stuff. I, you know, France 24, CBC, um, uh, BBC, uh, name it name it, Al Jazeera, they are all on there and they give an international view of what's going on in the world. That's what we need, folks. I could give a hoot in heck what happens at the Academy Awards. I could care less about, you know, uh, hair hairstyles or rock groups or whatever, because let me tell you something, that means very, very little in this world view. What we're talking about is countries that are going to have an impact on the United States. And this one today, this episode today, Saudi Arabia aligns with Iran, with China in the middle. This is the second or third show that I've covered that has China in it. This is getting to be a real, honest to goodness, no kidding, no kidding threat. Uh, Xi Jinping just entered his third term as undisputed um, premier of you know the communist basically the, the communist head honcho of communist china i mean we're talking about a dictator here folks we're talking about an individual that dresses up in suits and ties all nicey nicey but the bottom line is is that this country is it, and the one thing he did state in his in his area of expertise as the prim, as the premier of china was that uh we're talking about a strong military force he wants to have a stronger military force what does that mean? More military spending. Where are they going to get the money? Well, let's go into that. So let's let's understand why we're talking about China. Uh, you know what is happening here? Saudi Arabia and Iran just sat down with China <clears throat> as the mediator. This is interesting. Now we have to take a look at this to patch up their differences after decades of silence. They had all kind of interesting aspects, specifically um, Yemen, where Iran was providing a lot of money, people, whatever you want to call it, for uh, the insurrection there in Yemen. And it was causing problems with Saudi Arabia. And I think it's it, it's important to note, and let's let's just do that for a second here. Let's just talk about you know what we're talking about with with ge geography because I think a lot of people do not realize exactly what's going on in the geographical area. So we're we're gonna actually you know make that we're, we're gonna take a look at that and we're gonna see about this. Uh, from the uh, from the Google Earth perspective, so let's take a look at Saudi Arabia here. <clears throat> now, this is called the Saudi Arabian Peninsula here, and uh, so this is interesting because you have basically the Persian Gulf here, the Gulf of Oman here, and here you have Iran, and here's Saudi Arabia. And here, folks, is Oman and Yemen. So all this is part of the basically the Saudi Arabian Peninsula, this peninsula area here. You have Jordan then up here, then you have Israel. So now you go into the Mideast, right? So and remember, remember um, Iraq, we, we had a lot of troops in right along this borderline here and Saudi Arabia. Because when Iraq went into Kuwait and took Kuwait, we had to drive them out of there. We had to do that by making sure that Iraq couldn't put any of their troops into that area. So there are a lot of troops, 100,000 troops right along this border area here. So uh, now we're having an issue with Qatar um, because Qatar, there was uh, just recently a, uh, a ship that was, I think it was about uh, six months ago or so, a ship that was in the Persian Gulf actually was fired upon. Uh, and they're thinking it was from Iran. 
So, so this, this alignment between Saudi Arabia and Iran is very important, very important. And that, that will help to, to hopefully, you know, quell a lot of, of anxiety and angst between these two countries. So that's pretty much it with that. <clears throat> so that's what's, what's going on. And China happens to sit down with that. China is putting their foot in a lot of different pools. One, they're putting their foot in Africa. Two, they're putting their foot in, um, their, whoop. let me see if I can get this here. Sorry. So basically, they're putting their foot in Africa. They're putting their foot in the Mideast. They're putting their foot. They have a lot of, of little, you know, let's, let's get you people in this. Let's get you people in there. We're going to and we're going to cover the Shanghai Cooperation Organization, which we did in the prior prior show. But I think it's it's we need to refresh that. So we're going to refresh that here in a second. But I want to go over this first. So negotiated bilateral relations negotiated in Beijing. The capital of communist China. So interestingly, interestingly enough, both the Saudi Ra the Saudis and the Iranians, and by the way, Iran, <clears throat> what they speak is Farsi, but basically they're Persian. So we're talking about Persia here, right? They, uh, when we talk about Mideast, we always include Iran in that, but that's not really true, folks. It's um, Iran is actually more... Um, so, you know, Southwest to, to West Asia area, but we'll get into that. Al Jazeera, Al Jazeera report on this. Uh, good, very good. Here's your link right here. Al Jazeera does a great job of reporting this stuff, especially international aspects. I highly urge people to go to the site and take a look at this, take a look at this, um, this story. So <clears throat> again, has been reported on heavily, if at all, from from the U.S. media, I mean, heaven forbid we should be talking about anything but you know internal strife within our country, not the ex, not the external aspect of the world, but hey, we got you know we got to fix what's happening here in this country because of course that's all you know it's all encompassing. I mean, you know, yeah, more interested in the Academy Awards than the impact on this world situation. So how does this affect me? And that's what you're asking. How you know? Okay, Chris, this is real nice, but how does it affect me, me personally? Right, the Shanghai. <clears throat> cooperation organization. Now I have this, and this is actually this this is actually wrong. Um, it does not have Saudi and Iran as the potential members. It has Iran as the potential members. Um, Saudi Arabia. I have no doubt that sooner or later Saudi Arabia is going to kind of join this. And I'll tell you why they're probably pulling back at this point is because. And let me let me just fix this because I think this is really important. Is that um, it does not have Saudi; it has Iran, right? <clears throat> so I think that's important. Um, Saudi, I think it's potential, right? Potential members, and I think this is important because when we talk about this stuff, we talk about you know potential membership. If I were the Chinese, I would be pushing very hard for Saudi Arabia to join the SCO. Why? Because they're an oil producer, just like just like Iran is. So now you have two major oil producers in a bilateral relationship. This is a big deal. So originally OPEC, right, the oil producing and exporting countries, um, were formed with Saudi and Iran and all the other OPEC countries. And they started to um, basically price gouge uh, all Western countries with their oil. Originally, I mean, I can remember as a kid, as a young kid, as a very, very young kid, where um, gasoline at one point, we had a gas war, and this was in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. We had a gas war and gas actually went down to a dime a gallon. Now people are gonna sit there and say, no, it didn't. Yes, it did. I worked at a gas station. I set the prices. The price went down to a dime a gallon. That's, that's how cheap oil was at that point in time. OPEC came into, came into play in 1970s and all of a sudden we had gasoline shortages. So that's that's what happened with that. So now the U.S. is producing their own oil. OPEC found itself outside of the monopoly, and that's where you have these issues. Where Saudi Arabia, <clears throat> and I realized that our president <clears throat> went to Saudi Arabia at one point and asked them to produce more oil. And I think what's happening is now is you know we have we don't have a really good relationship with Iran at this point in time. Iran and Saudi Arabia are now aligned. They now have diplomatic, they're, they're, you know, they're 
switching ambassadors. They're doing all this stuff to, to get diplomatic relations up. Um, this could be a problem with Saudi Arabia. You know, are they going to do the U.S.'s bidding? I doubt very much, especially if they have somebody like China and, and Iran on their side, right? So China needs oil to continue manufacturing, lots of manufacturing, including weapons. So they're, they're the go-between between between those two major oil producers. So this means that China will become stronger in the energy marketplace and have more means to get the energy that they need or even get the energy and then export that energy to other areas or, or use the energy to be able to do what they need to do to be a stronger country. You know, and, and I went through all this. Yeah, but how, but how does this affect me? How does this affect me? Okay, the U.S. is starting to drill and refine their own oil. Now, the controversial Willow, Willow Project is online and, and look that up. It's in Alaska. Um, they're talking about, um, you know, about 600 million barrels in over a period of time, which is interesting because um, that's just one area. We, we produce a lot of barrels of oil, right? So, however... China's trying to corner the energy market through the SCO. So they, they brought Iran in and pretty soon they're going to bring Saudi Arabia in. And, you know, people are going to sit back and go, yeah, but Chris, you know, when you go over the SCO, Saudi Arabia is not part of the SCO. Not yet. Not yet. But they will be. And some of our allies are now part of the SCO. So, you know, India for one. You know, it's funny because India and Pakistan are part, uh, you know, they're trying to get into the SEO. So now you have two countries that really don't like each other, India and Pakistan, but yet, and they're both nuclear powers that are now going to start getting into the, the SEO. So, you know, we're talking about um, they're going to corner that energy market. It could be problematic for, for Europe and East Asia, right? J Japan, for one, but it could also extend into our friends in Australia. Australia imports their oil. They get they have ve they're a very very small energy producer, very small, but they use a lot of oil. They get some of their oil imports from China. So so what's going to what's going to happen with that relationship, that energy import, right? So China's going to build their reserves. They're going to commandeer the SCO members monetary resources. Now we 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 covered that last week and we'll we'll cover that again. This could mean the US will be more isolated. And we'll have to, you know, depend on ourselves for a lot of things, which we should do anyways, to tell the truth, in my opinion. So, you know, again, how does this affect me in the United States? China taking over the energy resources for much of the world, they could set energy prices to get revenue. This means that they might share this revenue with other SEO members, member countries, which we'll talk about. It will also affect the oil prices in the U.S. and raise the price of oil. They could actually raise the price of oil or they could lower it to the point where they're the cheapest. And then we have to lower our price to be able to cover that if we're exporting oil. This could affect you at the pump. Either way, it could affect you as the pump, costing you more money. The electricity to provide power to electric cars would have to come from oil and coal plants, mainly coal plants. But there is there are fossil fuels that other fossil fuels that do do power electricity now. This will affect the United States in the world marketplace with China taking over the helm of the energy production and sales. Their goal, China's goal is to, is to commandeer as much infrastructure as possible that either affects the target nation or it affects those nations that are peripherally associated with that target nation. That's what they do. That's what they do. They're doing it now in Africa. And, you know, it's, it's very evident they're doing it in other areas. So China has Middle Eastern oil. So what? Well, China is also making headway into Africa. Africa has a lot of oil and natural gas. And, and the, you know, the, Russia is going in there to try to get some. And China's in there trying to get some. And ev evidently, you know, the Chinese want to do this so badly, they're actually teaming up with France. They're teaming up with France to fund a pipeline from Uganda oil drilling the Tanzania, Tanzania ports. I addressed that in the last, in the last video when I talked about that. And, you know, France is, I don't know, unaligned, not aligned. I don't know. I don't think they care. They don't care who they deal with just so long as, hey, look, you know, we can get our oil because France right now needs oil. And they're going to all kinds of places to try to get this oil. They even, they even went to Algeria 
where in the 19, in, in the 19, uh, from 1950 to 1960 something, I mean, they, they had an Algerian war of which the French really did some atrocities uh, against the Algerian people that, that Macron, President Macron has apologized for. But these atrocities were, I mean, women, children that killed, they just killed them. I mean, it was, you know, torture, kill. It was just, it was a horrible situation. But so Algeria said, no, no, thanks. We're not going to do that. So they're going to other African countries to try to, to try to gauge up the, you know, get, get some oil out of that situation. So China gets a foothold in the oil reserves in Africa, along with the Middle East and Persia. They could hold the U.S. hostage in oil. We have to be able to self-sustain oil. You know, we have to be a self-sustaining oil country. That's what we have to do. Venezuela is there. Um, they're, they're in in a lot of chaos right now. And we'll, we'll talk about that on a future show. Remember, we export oil. If countries do not need our oil, this would raise the price of oil here. So, I mean, just see, I, I'm not an economist, but I am a customer, you know, and I've seen oil raise go up and down and up and down and up and down. And, you know, releasing reserves somehow helps that situation. I don't know how it does, but basically it's supposed to. So there's all kinds of situations there that, that we have to take into consideration where we're talking about this. So the future would look grim unless we do something now to prevent the Chinese. So what do we do? We must make headway into Africa, not to take over a country, but to help the Africans self-govern. This is, this is where I've seen it personally, that we tend to give money to an African country to maintain some type of infrastructure there. Well, the problem is, is that money... Uh, nobody knows where that money goes. It's supposed to go to the people, but I've seen us give millions of dollars to African countries and the people are still poor. I mean, millions of dollars. There's no way that the people should be living in shanties, you know, but that they do because the money is absconded or, you know, from corrupt government or whatever else. And all of a sudden, you know, there's, there's an issue there. So um, that's what we need. You know, we've been silent on Africa. I mean, I'll say it again, and I will say it again, and I will say it again. Why is AFRICOM headquarters, African Command headquarters in Germany? Why is it in Europe? It should be in Africa. If that's where our area is of responsibility, that's where we should have our headquarters, in Africa. And I think it's, it's embarrassing, it's humiliating to me as a veteran, and a veteran in an intelligence area, to have a situation where you have the, I mean, uh, European, UCOM is in Europe. PACOM is in the Pacific. Now I realize that PACOM is in Hawaii, okay? But at least it's in the Pacific. At least it's there in the middle of the Pacific. I mean, SOUTHCOM, you know, again, United States, but the, it, it's at least as close to South America. So you have situations where you got to CENTCOM. You know, CENTCOM headquarters is sitting here in the United States. Why? Why is CENTCOM here in the United States? It's responsible for, for you know, Mideast and, and Southwest Asia and all that. Why is it sitting there? So I, I, I just, I have some, some issues with that. I'm sure people smarter than me uh, in the Dep Department of Defense, because they're all smarter than me, probably in the Department of Defense, according to them. So it's, uh, you know, why don't we have these headquarters sitting in that country? I don't, I don't know. Or countries. I don't know. I don't understand it. But, uh, you know, AFRICOM, you're right there. You're literally right there. Just ship it on down to Africa. We have bases there already. We have a couple of bases, just put it at a base and it can, you know, it can, it can double as a headquarters, but no. And why is that? Because we've been silent on Africa, Russia and China are providing infrastructure. They're providing all kinds of building, providing all kinds of things for Africa. Um, the U S needs to make a, an effort, right? Unobligated infrastructure. We just need to, to not just give them money, but help them to self-govern. That's, that's the deal. We're giving billions billions, billions with a B to Ukraine in the way of weapons. We can't give millions to Africa. I, you know, I don't, I don't get this. Billions we're giving for basic consumables, for ammunition, for things, for things that, you know, we have to constantly up, you know, give and give and give and give. Why are we doing that? You know, I, oh, it's to prevent Russia from, I, okay. So it's all about Europe. You know, again, we, it's funny how people sit there and say, we're too European centric. But yet we're giving billions to a European country. I, 
you know, so this this type of stuff just I don't I don't quite understand. But again, people are smarter than me on this. So China's forming alliance, Shanghai Cooperation Organization. Alliance composed of countries have oil production and exporting capabilities. I'm telling you that Saudi this is my prediction. Saudi Arabia will become part of the SCO. Will. Now, <clears throat> it may take six months, but I think once they start talking to Iran, start talking about all this stuff, and all of a sudden they realize, well, you know, OPEC is kind of falling asunder here. But we can we can maybe get exporting stuff with China. You, you know, use it with that. If the Chinese help these countries through security and other assistance, it can mean great harm to the U.S., and their allies. Think about the situation with Iran right now. They, I don't know where they are in relationship to the to the to their nuclear weapon uh, manufacturing, but we are not their friend, but we are Saudi's friend supposedly. So now, what do we do? Now, Saudi is going to be having diplomatic relations with Iran. So anything with we share with Saudi Arabia. They're probably going to share with Iran. So now, now we have a, an issue with that. Uh, basically, NATO and ASEAN. I want you to look that up. I mean, if you have if you haven't heard of this, you know, Association of Southeast Asian Nations. I mean, ASEAN. I don't know if it, the thing is the sad part about it is it, it exists, but I don't know how strong it is at this point. This was our way of doing a, a, a Far East NATO. Is basically what it was all about. But I don't know. I don't know what will happen with that. If the U.S. can't provide security and assistance, it can mean curtains for our national security, right? So, so that's it with that. And and now what we need to do is, is sit back and 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 take a look at where we where we are. So basically, we are at we're here within this area, right? And look where China is in relationship to this. China's right here. This is China, right? You have India here, and then you have Iran. So what's next to Iran? Hmm. What's next to Iran? Afghanistan. Afghanistan is a country in the SCO. Iran wants to be a country in the SCO. Pakistan, country in the SCO. India, country in the SCO. So you have all these different, look at this. That's the entire Southwest Asia and into, into Iran. I mean, they SCO is doing a lot of areas here. Some of the stands are in there. Kazakhstan, I think, is in there. I mean, so, so there's a lot of different different countries. And basically what's happening is they want to control of this entire region, all of it, all of it. And this is only a matter of time before they actually get it, before they actually get it. So I think that's that's pretty important also. <clears throat> So this is this is what we're talking about. Now let's talk about um, let's talk about the uh, SCO, right? So this is as as we went here before. This is the SCO, right? And we talked about this. Let's talk about countries involved: India, Pakistan, Iran, Mongolia, Afghanistan, Belarus. These are countries that you know they call observer nations, but basically what's happening is, is they're trying to get more and more in here, right? Six dialogue partners, <clears throat> and some of these are enemies: Azerbaijan, Armenia, you know. So countries included China, Russia, Kazakhstan, Kyrgyzstan, Tajikistan, Uzbekistan, Iran, going to be in there. They were originally formed as the Shanghai Five, right? China, Russia, these these five countries, right? One, two, three, four, five. Uzbekistan, I think it was six. So uh, uh, the Shanghai Five. Okay, so that was five countries in China, right? So all of a sudden, added Uzbekistan in 2001. So originally it was China, Russia, Kazakhstan, Kyrgyzstan, and Tajikistan. So that's what that was the Shanghai Five. So now all of a sudden, you're talking about <clears throat> population about 1.5 billion. Um, that's just China. So I mean. You're talking about these areas, right? Afghanistan, Belarus, Afghanistan, lots and lots and lots of raw materials here. Lots of raw materials. So, you know, you can talk about the different background. You know, it's, you know, it's, it, we're talking, you know, China wants stability in their, in their realm. Afghanistan could lead to a lot of regional stability. So they want to, they want to kind of do that. I mean, it's interesting how, they want to battle three evils, terrorism, separatism, and extremism. And I've talked about this before. 
So this is, you know, these are the finances. China wants to form a bank, <clears throat> a bank to consolidate funds from all the SEO countries. Think about this for a second. They, China wants to own the financials of countries that like this country, India, Pakistan, Iran, Mongolia. I mean, all these different countries, you know, Turkey. I mean, this is a NATO member. <laughs> Turkey's a NATO member. So all of a sudden, you go, what? So that's that's what that's what I'm talking about. So basically what's happening is, is that, you know, we have the ability to do the things we need to do to be able to make this more secure. And, <clears throat> and what does that mean? That means we have to present a good, solid front to be able to go in and do what we need to do. And I get it why we're giving billions of dollars to Ukraine. I get this. You know, I understand this. But think about the alliances you could build with with forty billion dollars, or how many billion dollars we're giving to, to Iran, basically, or to Iran to uh, to Ukraine. I mean, think about that. That is a lot, a lot, a lot of money, and we could do a lot of good with that money. A lot of good with that money. I realize we're trying to keep Russia at bay. I, you know, I, you know, the, the sanctions aren't working. But what's happening is Russia has the ability to go to the SCO and get what they need to be able to keep on going. I mean, so what are we really doing? All we're doing is building stronger and stronger and stronger this SEO. Yeah, we're throwing sanctions at everybody, but the bottom line is this, is that, is India doing that? Is Pakistan doing that? Is Iran doing that? No, Iran, Iran doesn't care about the sanctions. Mongolia, Afghanistan, Belarus, Belarus doesn't care. Armenia, Azerbaijan, Cambodia, Nepal, Turkey, Sri Lanka, all these countries that want to be involved in the SEO. Do you really think they're putting sanctions against, <clears throat> against Russia and China? You know, or against Russia? Doubtful. Very, very doubtful. So that's basically what this whole program was about. Is to talk about, hey, look, <clears throat> you know, you have Iran who wants to be a member of the SEO. My prediction, do it on the show, is that that um, Saudi Arabia is going to want to be part of the SEO. They're, you know, they're making this diplomatic relationship with, with Iran. And you don't think that China as a mediator didn't bring up something with the SEO, with both of them, with both of them in there. So this is something that is really, really important with that area. So I think that if we're going to understand a worldview, then we have to understand the world, not just not just what's going on with <clears throat> the United States. Uh, you know, I get it. You got to have you want to have local news. You want to have lo I get it. Go ahead, see your local news, see your local weather, all that stuff. That's that's nicey nicey. But the bottom line is is that this local, the the global aspect will affect local aspect. Global will affect local. That has always been that way and will always be that way. So on that note, I'm going to go ahead and leave you uh, <clears throat> with another uh, worldview in the can, so to speak. And we will, uh, we will see you next time on the worldview where we here take a look at the world view, not local, worldview and how it affects us here in the United States, and you in your neighborhood. Have a great week. Take care. Stay healthy.